Shenley Laboratories presents The Doctor Fight, starring Glenn Ford in a thrilling true story of a doctor in World War II. The Doctor Fight, starring Glenn Ford. The eternal providence has appointed me to watch over the life and death of all thy creatures. May I always see in the patient a fellow creature in pain. Grant me strength and opportunity always to extend the domain of my craft. This is the prayer of every doctor. It is ages old and yet today it is as new as the heroism of tomorrow's battles. This is a doctor at war. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the makers of Penicillin Shenley are proud to bring you this program based on actual happenings in tribute to the magnificent service being rendered mankind by American physicians at home and abroad. Theirs is truly a great heritage, one of tremendous courage, tireless effort, supreme devotion to the cause of healing. One of the aids at the disposal of these doctors in their gallant battle against disease is penicillin, the drug which only a year ago was produced in such limited quantities that the principal output was earmarked for use by the Army and Navy, but which today, thanks to the enterprise of American industry, is available wherever needed for home front healing as well. Shenley Laboratories takes pride in having been among those firms permitted to produce penicillin. Tonight, Captain Rame's story is the true story of Captain Robert Rame, a man who has done much to preserve the efficiency of our combat flyers. Captain Rame received the Presidential Unit Citation with Oak Leaf Cluster, the Soldier's Medal, the Air Medal with four Oak Leaf Clusters, and four Campaign Stars. We will meet Captain Rame in person later in our program. And now, The Doctor Fights, starring Glenn Ford. Over the airfield, the stars were going out. In the first gray light of that Italian morning, the squadron of bomber planes were nosing toward the starting line. And off to the side of the field stood an ambulance. Seated in the cab with the motor running, watching the planes, were two men, doctors, Captain Robert Rain and his friend, Captain Hall. Every time a mission begins, I get the same feeling. Yeah? What's that? I wish I was a stranger here and didn't know those kids in the planes. I wish I didn't know anybody. And it was, it was just a pretty thing to watch a squadron taking off. And you know, it would be pretty if there weren't any men in those planes. There they go. Six, seven, eight, nine. They watched as 15 planes roared down the runway. And the 16th stood at the starting line, its engines howling. Something the matter there. He's not taking off. His engines sound all right, Raym. Something's wrong. Come on. Trouble, Pete. The bombardier, Carl here. He's got a pain in his wrist. He can't bend it. Now, your wrist hurt you? I'm... I'm... I don't know what happened. I suddenly can't bend it. See, look. Hmm. Ever break it or anything like that? No. Never hurt me before. We're just about to take off, and suddenly... Uh-huh. 
Pete. Yeah? You can't fly Carl today. Call the tower for a bombardier replacement. Well, is there something wrong with his wrist, or isn't there? That depends on what you mean by wrong. His muscles are all right, his tendons, his bones, but... Then he's he... faking a stiff wrist. That's the story, isn't it? No, Colonel, that wrist is really stiff. You see, he's mentally tired. His resistance to fear is worn down. Naturally, he won't admit outright that he's scared, so his fear goes into that wrist, and he disqualifies himself that way. But it's an unconscious thing. He's not faking. That, that wrist is absolutely stiff. All it means to me is that he's yellow. Carl has 41 missions and five decorations. I never heard a complaint out of him. It's an unconscious thing, Colonel. Yeah. Well, all I can tell you, Captain, is that this mental fatigue business is losing me a lot of men. Now, you're the flight surgeon, and I want you to stop it. That's exactly why I wanted to see you, Colonel. I've... I've got a proposition. If I'd have spotted Carl early enough and realized how mentally exhausted he was, I could have... Well, I could have had him rest before this thing set in. But it's very hard to tell when their minds are dangerously fagged out and when they're just normally tired. So what I want to do is make a tour of 50 missions myself. You? You're a doctor. You're liable to... If me. I could know personally how it feels after 10 missions, or 20, or 30, it'd be much easier for me to spot mental exhaustion in others. You see, there are signs when a man's breaking up, and I want to be able to read those signs just as soon as they appear. I want to do 50 missions, the regular combat ones. Strictly between ourselves, Rame, this group in the next 60 days is going to bomb the most heavily defended areas in Germany. And I'm afraid there's going to be a good many crews that won't finish 50 missions. I can't allow that to matter, Colonel. With your permission, sir. Now, just hold it a minute, Rame. If you should decide after, well, say, 20 or 30 missions that you've had enough... I'll finish my tour. But if you should decide to quit, it would do more to ruin the guts of this group than anything the Germans could throw at us. Because they respect your good sense. And if you quit, they'll feel it's intelligent to quit. So it's 50 missions... Not 20 or 30 or 40. Right? Right, sir. Good luck. Pete. Hello? Yeah? This is Sandy. Captain Rames on the field. He's coming this way. Is he going to fly with us today? Yeah, it's our turn. You know, he's been with almost everybody else in the squadron the last two weeks. Hey, what does he do? Examine the guys in flight? Don't ask me. I was talking to Joey Adams. He's going to board us. Hey, fellas, the quack's coming aboard. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, merry gentlemen. You gunners will move over so I can sit on the floor there. You can notify the pilot to take off and bomb Germany. Get settled, Captain. We'll be off in a minute. Uh, welcome to the Toledo Terror. Oh, thanks, Pete. Drive careful now, like a good little boy. Hey, George, will you steady this gadget as we go up? I want to record my blood pressure. Okay. That's it. Just hold it there now. Hey, how many missions you do so far, Captain? Oh, I'm a veteran of 12. This is number 13. 13? <laughs> hey, George, be quiet a minute, will you? I want to find my pulse here. You're not really going to do 50, are you? Well, that depends on how the Germans feel about it. How you been doing, Captain? You learning anything? I'd say that's a fast pulse. Feel scared, Captain? I didn't think so, but apparently I'm not exactly at ease here. The first ten were the tough ones, though. I felt, I felt all alone, you know, as though the Germans were aiming only at me. <laughs> Blood pressure went up high as a kite. Now I feel like, like part of the outfit, like you guys were some kind of protection. That's just the way it worked with me after the first ten. Yeah, me too. But that'll change, you know. Well, why will it change? Well, after 20 or 30 missions, you get to realize that being buddies don't stop Flack from smashing the plane to pieces. Here we go, Captain. Hold the indicator steady. I'm taking my pressure. Brace yourself. Why is he keeping so close to the ground? George! Sandy, we're only a few feet off the ground. What's wrong? I don't know. Hey, Sandy, what's wrong? Pete! What's the matter, Pete? We're wobbling. Pull her up! I... I can't... She won't ride! Get ready to crash. Get ready to crash! Anybody hurt? Anybody hurt? George! I, I 
just want to get out. I'm getting out of here. Captain, you all right? Yeah, I'm... I'm swell. So you I, better take something, Captain. You're I'm a little a, pale. I'm... Hey, my, my blood pressure, it went up 52 points. Gee. Help me out of here, will you? Help me out. Help me out. I think you'd better forget the whole thing, Bob. You're not made for it. You've examined me, Frank. There's nothing wrong, is there? Physically, not a thing. But you've been resting a week, and you're still in I'm a... going up this morning. Toss my boots over. Bob, you're in a nervous state. You're drinking coffee like crazy. And look, three empty packs of cigarettes since yesterday. I'm going up. It's just that crash got me, that's all. Now, listen, Bob... Don't argue with me. Twelve missions and I quit? Oh, what a laugh. For no. you, 12 is enough, Bob. Well, why isn't enough for everybody else on the field, then? It is for anybody in your condition. What? What condition? What are you talking about? You've got flight fatigue, Bob. If a man in your condition came to you, you'd have ordered him grounded. Well, I was wrong then. I'm scared, sure. But you know what the trouble is? I should have gone up immediately after that crash instead of laying around here all week dreaming of all the things that could have happened. No, from now on, after a minor accident, the men are going up right again. All right. But you can't go up today, Bob. I've got to. You're not going up. I've got to. I've got to break this thing. I'm scared and all the crews think... I want to prove something, and I will, today. Sandy? Yeah, Pete, ready to go? About 30 seconds. How's the captain? I don't know. He's sitting here with all the parachutes piled up to hide the windows. Maybe you better talk to him while I'm taking off. He's scared of a takeoff, that's all. Well, don't you crack us up again, Pete. Another one of those 20-cent takeoffs, and the captain will do his riding on trolley car. How is he, Sandy? Sweating, that's all. He won't look up. How are we, off the ground? Airborne now. 100 feet now. 150. We're away now. Tell him, Sandy. Tell him we're away. Captain? Hey, Captain. Huh? Yes? Yeah. We're up now. Oh, well, it's... Oh, it's fine. Yeah, it was a nice takeoff. <laughs> Beautiful takeoff. Yeah. Here, I'll get these chutes away if you want to look out of the window now. Uh, yes, I, I'd like to. There. Right. there you are. Uh-huh. Pretty down there, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's fine. How do you feel? Excellent. It's amazing. Never felt better. You see, Sandy, you can break it. A man can break a fear. I know, but you oughtn't to forget, Captain, this is only number 13 for you. It may be different before you finish the other 37. 37? <laughs> I almost forgot. Good Lord, 37 ago. That's a peculiar feeling, isn't it? That's a word for it. Peculiar. And numerous. That's the thickest flak I ever saw, George. I didn't even look at it. There's nothing you can do to stop it, so I look right through it. Where'd we get it? George, we got hit, didn't we? I don't know where it is. Sandy! The captain's looking for the holes. Sandy. Sandy, you smell that? That's gasoline, isn't it? Oh, brother. Pete. Pete, there's gasoline fumes back here. Oh, and the stabilizer's are shot. I'm turning for home. Pete, this is Captain Rain. The plane is filling with gas fumes. How long will it take to get us home? At least an hour. I've got trouble with the stabilizers. All right, just fly the plane. We'll take care of everything back here. I'll fly it. Yeah, boy, I'm flying it. Just make a spark back there and we'll all fly it. There's no use worrying. Just fly the plane. Well, find out where the leak is coming from, will you? Cut that out and fly the plane. You make one spark, we'll blow to hell. Fly the plane. Just fly the plane, you hear me? Good crowd here tonight, eh, Bob? Yeah. Hello, Captain. Hello there. Hi. Here you're on your last ten. Yep, 40 behind me. <laughs> you're going to fly in my plane again before you're through, aren't you? Oh, definitely, Howard. Good. 
I have just been unfaithful lately, eh? <laughs> Taking a different one out every mission. Yeah. Uh, I'll be with you one of these days. Okay, make it so now. All right. Bob, use your common sense. What good is this doing? 40 missions. And all you've accomplished scientifically is that you've tied yourself into an emotional knot. Oh, no nonsense. You haven't had a full night's sleep in two weeks. And what have you learned? What? I don't know for sure, Frank, but when a man tells me he's afraid, from now on I'll know what he yeah. means. Well, look, Sam, when a man... don't take that... Hey, there's a fight over here. Hey, there's trouble. Come on. Liar. You heard me? I think you're a liar. You take that back, Sandy, or I'll beat your head off. Oh, yeah? Well, he's always jumping on me. Everything I say, he jumps on me. Get out of here, Sandy. I think he's a liar, so I'll call him a Get out of here, Sandy. George, stay away from him. I think you better get to work on that crew, Bob. They don't get along anymore. Been fighting every night for the last week. No, no. That that crew is all right. There's nothing wrong with it. Hello, Rame. Oh, good evening, Colonel. Well, how have you been? Oh, I want to talk to you, Rame. Uh, sit down here, will you? Oh, thanks. Come on, Hall, drop a chair. Rame, something's got to be done about that crew. Yesterday was the second time they returned to base before reaching the target. They keep finding something wrong with the plane. And the mechanics can't find a thing. That uh, gunner there, Sandy. No, no, it's, it's not Sandy. There's nothing wrong with Sandy. But he's always picking a fight. The other gunner, too, George. No, no, George is all right. I I think it's the pilot. The pilot? Mm-hmm. Why, why, look at him over there. Never opens his mouth. Nice, quiet, gentlemanly fellow. Notice, though, he's always blowing his nose. <laughs> well, what of it? I, I don't know. I just have a feeling that something's happened to that boy. I, see... He's doing it again. Oh, go on. Can't a man blow his nose without... No, this? not every two minutes. I'll take him into my office now. I'll see you, Colonel. Uh, wait, Rame. Uh, you're the doctor, it's true. But uh, from what I can see, that pilot is perfectly all right. Now, you tend to those two gunners. I don't want you to bother the pilot. You're liable to get him worked up about something, and he'll be useless to me. Colonel, I believe it's the pilot that's causing the trouble on that plane. But how do you know? You used to get rid of the troublemakers, not the quiet ones. I used to deal with effects instead of the cause, that's why. I've flown 40 missions now, and I've learned some things that I never knew before. As a doctor, I'd get rid of those two gunners, but as a flyer, I'm telling you it's that pilot I'm afraid of. No, I'll have to talk to him, okay? Yeah, just remember, Rain, a pilot's no good to me unless he's flying. A flyer is like a tire, Colonel. You'll ruin him forever if you run him when he's flat. Uh, sit down, Pete. Cigarette? No, I uh, can't enjoy a smoke anymore. It clogs up my nose. You got a cold? No, I just get a feeling that I can't breathe. You know? The gasoline. What? Ever since the gas fumes filled the plane that time, you've been blowing your nose. No, it's, it's got nothing to do with that. I, I, I Twice just... you've turned back from the target. I had a bad engine. My stabilizer... Not according to the mechanic. Why are you picking on me? I've flown as steadily as anybody in the squadron. Sandy and George are the ones who are making all the trouble. They're the ones you well, should be talking... It's because of you, Pete. I have a feeling they're nervous about flying with you. What do you think? I never said anything to make them nervous. They're lying to you, Captain. No, they haven't said a word to me, Pete. No, no, no kidding. I, I just feel it myself. I know how it feels now to have a dozen missions to go on with a pilot who's not sure of himself. There's no, no disgrace, Pete. Tell me. You're... You're scared. Aren't you, Pete? I'm, I'm... I'm afraid of catching fire. I can't help it. I dream of catching fire and going down burning. I, I wake up and I'm... I'm suffocating. I can't breathe. I... All right, all right, Pete. <laughs> I... I think you're due for a rest. Oh, a couple of weeks. How about it? Captain, how did you know? Have I been acting funny? I tried my best not to let it get me. I, I try every way I know Nobody's not... Nobody's noticed, Pete. Don't worry. I just picked you out because... Well, I'm supposed to fly with you tomorrow. But how did you know that I was well, the one? Well, I'm nervous about you myself. And I figured that if, if I am, the crew must be too. I've got ten missions to finish, and I'd like to finish them in one piece. That's when, when you get smart, you know. When you start playing with your own chips. Now, you take a rest, Pete. Starting now. <laughs> Yes? 
Our plane's been contacted by the radio man of the Toledo Terror. He wants to talk to you, sir. Go ahead, Toledo Terror. Toledo Terror calling, sir. The crew requests permission to buzz the field when we get there. We've got Captain Rame aboard, and it's his last mission, sir. Number 50. We'd kind of like to celebrate if we may, sir. It's against regulations to buzz the field. Forget about it. All right, sir. Colonel Whiteside, this is Captain Friend on the Good Ferry. We were wondering if we could buzz the field. Uh, you know, it's Captain Rame's last mission, sir. Nobody in this squadron is buzzing any fields. Now cut it out. Colonel Whiteside, Lieutenant Franklin calling from the Boston Flusy. The crew and I would kind of like you to... You fly your course and forget about buzzing the field. Major Williams calling Whiteside from the Brownsville Blockbuster. This we... is Colonel Whiteside calling all planes in the squadron. To all planes. My congratulations to Captain Rame. But nobody's going to buzz the field. Over and out. What's the verdict, Sandy? All the planes called him, but it's no soap, Pete. Hey, Pete. Look, this is George. Why don't you talk to the colonel? Ah, you know, it'd be beautiful, the whole squadron zooming down together. Go ahead, Pete, will you? Okay. Let me talk to him, Sandy. Toledo Terror calling Colonel Whiteside. Toledo Terror calling... This is Colonel Whiteside. Colonel, this is Lieutenant Peter Kantowitz. I'd just like to suggest that there are a number of men in the squadron, like myself, who the captain put back in the air by spotting us before we blew up. It's uh, a rare thing to happen, sir, and I think the other men feel the same way as I do. Colonel? Colonel Whiteside to the Toledo Terror. Put Captain Raymond. Captain? Hey, what are you, sleeping? Captain, the colonel's plane's calling you. Me? Yeah. Uh, Rame speaking, Colonel. How's your stomach, Rame? Well, that's a peculiar question, sir. It precedes a peculiar feeling, Rame. I want to congratulate you on your work for this group. Nobody's said very much about it, but we all think you've got plenty of guts for making a tour of 50 when you weren't obliged to. Well, well thanks a lot, Colonel. I, I'm, I'm really honored. I just want to tell you fellas in all the planes, I never could have gotten the idea if the men I was trying to help weren't worth everything I have. I... This is a hell of a place to be making a speech 5,000 feet above the ground. Colonel Whiteside to all planes in the squadron. Colonel Whiteside to all planes. In honor of the best flight surgeon that ever held a bomber crew together. Echelon to the right. The entire squadron will buzz the field at 15 feet. Oh, now, now look, Colonel, you don't have to do that. Hold on, Captain. Now, ladies and gentlemen, from New York, we present Captain Robert Rain, the flight surgeon who deliberately developed operational fatigue in order to better understand and care for the men in his charge. Captain Rain will be interviewed by Anthony Martin. Captain Rain, what made you decide on such a hazardous kind of research? Why, you might have developed so much operational fatigue, you would have been useless as a flight surgeon. My commanding officer thought so, too. <laughs> but you see, we were losing a lot of good men. Boys with plenty of missions and a lot of medals. The only one anything anyone knew to do at that time was to ground them permanently. And it all but broke their hearts. Well, I should imagine. And besides, being a tremendous loss to the Army. That's right. Operational fati fatigue is a disease. It's an airman's disease. And just like malaria or any other disease... One of the best ways to study it is to get it yourself. Well, tell me, Captain, uh, how did the men feel about it? Uh, did they like the idea of their doctor flying missions with them? Sure. Of course, they thought I was crazy to stick my neck out when I didn't have to. Mm -hmm. But during each of the missions, the colonel would tell the boys which plane I was flying in. I see. And if they had any casualties, to get in touch with me. 
It did a lot for the morale to know that the doc was up there with them in case they got hit. Well, doctor, uh, tell me, what could you do for them if you were in another plane? Oh, I could tell them what to do over the radio and reassure them. Well, tell me something else, doctor. Did you ever think about quitting before the 50 missions were up? More than once, Tony. Especially after those heavy raids over Palesti, Munich, and Vienna Neustadt. But I couldn't, of course. Because the boys would have said, if the, go- if the doc can't take it, he can't expect us to. <laughs> well, I don't blame them. You have to have their confidence, or you're through as a flight surgeon. Indeed. Well, I can see there's more to it than setting bones and patching up bullet holes, isn't there? Uh, as a matter of fact, you're sort of a father confessor and advisor and everything else. That's right. Being a good listener is one of the most important parts of the job. The boys have to have someone to tell their troubles to. If a man is worried or emotionally upset, it shows very quickly in his physical conditions and also lowers his efficiency as a flyer. Well, Captain, what you're practicing then is preventive medicine. To a large extent, if a flight surgeon can know each man individually, know all the intimate factors in his life, and know, and also have his confidence, he stands a pretty good chance of keeping that man flying. And that, of course, was why we were there. Well, it's easy to see from the decorations you're wearing, Captain Rain, that you were very much there. And thank you, not only for being here tonight, but for what you've contributed to the sum total of knowledge that helps keep our airmen in top condition. And now we return you to Glen Ford and Hollywood. This is Glenn Ford again, adding my sincere thanks to you, Captain Rain. Shenley Laboratories, maker of penicillin Shenley, dedicates this program to the 180,000 American doctors overseas and here at home. Wherever, whenever it is needed... In quantities unobtainable little more than a year ago, penicillin is now available to these doctors to aid them in the cause of healing. It is a tribute to American manufacturing enterprise that so greatly increased quantities of this valuable drug are now on the market. Shenley Laboratories is proud to have played a part in the expansion of penicillin production. And in closing, makes this pledge. In the same spirit of research for ways to benefit mankind... Shenley Laboratories will continue to work toward new developments, new products, which may well mean for thousands a more abundant life in the years to come. This is James Wallington reminding you to listen next week over these same stations at the same time when Shenley Laboratories will present The Doctor Fights, starring one of the stage and screen's finest actors, Francho Tone, in a thrilling true story, The Lan Ting Miracle. Glenn Ford appeared through the courtesy of Columbia Pictures and is soon to appear with Rita Hayworth in Gilda. Tonight, Dr. Fights was written by Arthur Miller with music by Leith Stevens and was produced and directed for Shenley Laboratories by D. Engelbach. Let's give our men in the Pacific all-out support. Cooperate 100% with price control, rationing, salvage drives, volunteer services. Until our enemy Japan is completely and finally defeated. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.